Good day. Welcome to the discussion of one of the important lessons in investment and portfolio management that we must really know and that is all about the investment alternatives. So, bakit nga ba napaka-importante that we must know about this topic? What is the significance of this lesson sa ating main course na investment and portfolio management? Well, having a deep understanding about different investment alternatives is one of the key secrets of a successful investment whether it is individual or corporate investment. But before we completely proceed to the discussion of our main topic, let me share to you first ano-ano nga ba ang mga pwede nating matutunan after nating matapos itong discussion na to. Of course, at the end of this video presentation, you can be able to explain the nature and characteristics of each investment alternatives, compare and contrast the different investment alternatives, and you can be able also to analyze the investment alternatives for the effective investment decisions. And for our course outline, we will discuss relevant things about negotiable securities, non-negotiable securities, life insurance, mutual funds, real assets, and real estates. So all of these topics will be included sa ating mga pag-uusapan dito sa video presentation na to. So to start with, let me share to you one inspiring quotation from the, one of the well-known investors in the whole world. So according to Warren Buffett, the best investment you can make is an investment in yourself. The more you learn, the more you will earn. So always remember this very good quotation. So lahat ng hirap na ginagawa nyo today sa pag-aaral nyo, lahat ng pagsusumikap nyo ngayon na makagraduate sa course nyo, so bawat pagpupuyat nyo, bawat uh, failure nyo, lahat ng yan ay part ng inyong lifetime investment. So remember, once na nakapagtapos na kayo ng pag-aaral, always aim for more learnings. Uh, always desire for the continuous education so that your earnings will follow. So don't worry guys, kahit wala pa man kayong investment account sa stock market ngayon or savings account sa banko, you are actually working on your personal investment. At ito ay ang investment ninyo sa inyong mga sarili. Moving forward, a trivia muna tayo. So this trivia is so shocking. And did you know that around the start of the 2000, Zimbabwe experienced hyperinflation that peaked in 2008. And at the peak, a single US dollar was worth 2,621,984,000 228 Zimbabwe dollars. So if you had just a one a US dollar, and uh, move to Zimbabwe, you would be a billionaire. So, kung titignan natin, sa pera natin yan, it is actually 347,937,307 Philippine Peso. Unfortunately, a loaf of bread cost 10,487,936,000 uh, Zimbabwe dollars. Siguro nagtataka ka kung paano nangyayari to. Alamin natin ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng hyperinflation. So according to the definition given by Investopedia, hyperinflation is a term to describe rapid, excessive, and out-of-control general price increases in an economy. While inflation is a measure of a pace of rising prices of goods and services, hyperinflation is rapidly rising inflation. And typically, measuring more than 50% per month. So, no wonder kung ang isang bansa ay maka-experience ng hyperinflation, the same might happen again due to the excessive rising of inflation rate. At sana hindi natin ma-experience to. And anyway, let's start our uh, actual uh, discussion na about investment alternatives. Let us first discuss the negotiable securities as one of the investment alternatives. So, ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng negotiable securities? So, let us discover more about this term. When we say negotiable securities, it refers to a security that may be resolved by one investor to another. So, most securities are marketable. They develop secondary markets for trading. It, all, it is also called marketable securities. It simply means if you own any of the types of negotiable securities, pwede mo siyang maibenta or ma-negotiate sa ibang investors. But of course, hindi mo basta-basta pwedeng ibenta yan na parang isang uh, produkto na kalimitan natin binibili or binibenta sa isang palengke or sa isang supermarket. Because selling securities is special, 
okay, secondary market will be developed when we tend to sell our securities. When we say secondary market, by the way, it is where investors buy and sell securities they already own. It is what people typically think na ay, yan yung tinatawag nilang stock market. But I want you to remember as well na ang stocks are also sold in the primary market when they are first issued. So kapag sinabi natin kasi na secondary market, kumbaga sa isang cellphone, second hand na siya. So may dati nang nagmamayari ng securities na ibinenta ulit. While kapag sinabi naman natin primary market, ito yung mga securities na first time pa lang siyang in-offer sa public. Okay, so this is the difference between primary and secondary market. So here are the different types of negotiable securities. We have variable income securities, fixed income securities, government securities, and money market securities. Unahin, unahin natin pag-aralan ang variable income securities. The term variable income security refers to investments that provide the owners with a rate of return that is dynamic and determined by market forces. So variable income securities provide investors with both greater risk as well as reward. I would like to highlight the latter statement that is uh, this type of securities provide investors great risk and reward. Yes, this is true dahil ang variable income securities ay risky dahil nakadepende ang return sa market forces. Kung, mabab kung mababa ang value ng security sa market, then the return of the investment will also follow down. Kaya nga siya tinawag na variable income. It means the return of the investment is not constant. Take note that variable income securities are typically valued by investors looking for higher returns than those offered by fixed income securities. So sabi nga natin kanina na ang variable income securities, even though mataas ang risk level niya, it could also give the investors higher return. So the basic example of in the variable income securities is the common stock which can offer investors virtually unlimited upside down uh, upside growth rather as well as the complete loss of principal again in exchange of this risk investors in um, the securities demand higher return than their fixed income counterparts so isa sa mga kilalang kilala ng karamihan kapag pinag-uusapan ang variable income securities ay ang tinatawag nating equity shares. So ano naman ang ibig sabihin ng equity shares? An equity share, normally known as ordinary share, is part ownership where each member is a fractional owner and initiates the maximum entrepreneurial liability related to a trading concern. These types of shareholder is uh, in any organization possess the right to vote. So meaning to say, ang ownership ng isang company ay nahahati sa mga major shareholders at kabilang dito ang equity shareholders. Today, maraming mga investors ang attracted sa equity share. Aside from the opportunities na nakukuha ng mga investors sa stock market, more investors are started to put their resources sa equity shares. We all know naman that one of the objectives of uh, the financial management is to leverage or to increase the shareholder's value. So in this case, kapag inilagay ng investor ang kanyang pera sa equity share, the company should protect the interest or the in the the, ano, the, the, the interest of the investors. So, kinakailangan nilang i-manage ng maayos ang business operations ng company uh, to recognize profit, profitability growth at para mapataas nila ang value ng kanilang mga stockholders. So, speaking of stock market naman, it classifies into uh, growth shares, income shares, defensive shares, cyclical shares, and speculative shares. So, unahin natin pag-usapan yung growth shares. So, the stocks that have higher rate of growth than the industrial growth rate is in profitability are referred to as growth shares. A growth share or stock is any share in the company that is anticipated to grow at a rate uh, significantly above the average growth for the market. But normally, Itong klase ng stocks na to ay hindi into distribution of cash dividends. This is because the issuers 
are usually companies that want to reinvest their earnings na nage-generate nila to recognize the possible growth sa kanilang investment even in short period of time. So kapag ang isang investor ay nag-decide na mag-invest sa growth share, they anticipate uh, that they will earn money through capital gain when they eventually sell their shares in the future. So investment in growth stocks can be risky. Okay, so risky din ang investment na to dahil nga hindi ito nag-offer ng dividends. So again, ang tanging opportunity lang ng isang investor to gain return from his or her investment is kapag ipinagbili na niya yung kanyang shares. And that is growth shares. Okay, ang next natin is income shares. These stocks belong to a companies that have comparatively stable operations and limited growth opportunities. Moreover, it is an equity security that pays regular, open, uh, steadily increasing dividends. Yung ganitong klase ng stocks ay usually nag-offer ng high yield. This kind of stocks also have lower level of volatility. And when we say volatility, it means the statistical measure na nagiging indicator kung gaano ba kataas or kababa yung opportunity na maglaho na lang bigla yung uh, possible return ng isang investment. So again, ang volatility ng income shares compared sa overall stock market ay mas mababa. Okay. Ang next natin is defensive shares. Kapag sinabi nating defensive shares or defensive stocks, ito yung uh, relatively unaffected by the market movements. It provides consistent dividends and stable earnings regardless of the state of the overall stock market. So, sabi nga natin, this is the stock, oh, this stock, stocks is unaffected or hindi naapektuhan ng galaw ng market. Ibig sabihin, may constant demand sa company's product kaya stable ang stock nila during the various phases of business cycle. Okay, well-established companies such as PNG, okay, J&J or yung Johnson and Johnson, Philip Morris International, uh, Coca-Cola are considered defensive stocks. Again, uh, pang ilan na ba? So we have three. So ang pangapat natin is cyclical shares. The business cycle affects the cyclical shares. So the upward and downward movements of the business cycle affects the uh, business prospects of certain companies that their stock uh, prices. Okay. So by the way, uh, these stocks can be affected through business expansion, okay, peak, recession, and recovery. Companies that have that have cyclical stocks include uh, car manufacturers, airlines, and furniture retailers, clothing stores, hotels, uh, different restaurants. So when they uh, when the economy is uh, doing well, then uh, people can afford to buy new cars. Pwede, uh, nakakapag-upgrade sila ng bahay, nakakapag-shop sila, at nakakapag-travel ang mga tao. Pero kapag na-experience natin ang poor status of the economy, yung mga nabanggit ko na yun, yun din yung kadalasang kauna-unahan or uh, might I say na kadalasang kinakat ng mga tao. So kapag ang isang investor ay nag-invest sa cyclical, cyclical share, they should consider the business cycle. Okay. Another one is speculative shares. So this is the last one. Uh, this type of share have lot of speculative trading. Okay. This here is that a trader uses to speculate. Uh, speculate. Okay, by the way, kapag sinabi natin speculation, uh, it is associated with buying low and selling high with the hope of making large capital gains. So, the spe speculator consequently engages in frequent buying and selling transactions. So, normally, ito yung mga trader. Okay, sila yung mga speculators. So, these are the uh, different variable income securities. Let us now discuss all about the fixed income securities. Alright, so a fixed income security is an investment that provides a return in the form of fixed periodic interest and uh, the eventual return of principal at maturity. So unlike variable income securities where payments uh, change based on or some underlying measure such as a short-term interest rates, the payments 
of uh, fixed income security are known in advance. So let me present to you the different types of fixed income securities. So here are the most common fixed income securities. So we have preference shares, debentures, and bonds. So for better understanding of these fixed income securities, kindly check the link of the video presentation on the description section of this video so that you will gain knowledge about these securities. Kasi uh, meron akong isang video presentation na nakafocus sa uh, equity shares at sa preference shares, so in debentures and bonds. So, mas mas mainam kung mababalikan yung video na yun in order for you guys to have a concrete or a detailed discussion about this kind of fixed income securities. Let us now move forward for the discussion of a government securities. Okay, so a government security is a bond or other type of a debt obligation that is issued by a government with a promise of repayment upon the securities maturity date. Government securities are usually considered low risk investment because they are backed by the taxing power of the government. Government securities are usually issued for two different reasons. So first, of course, to raise funds for government expenditures. And the second one is to finance the government developmental projects. Dito sa Pilipinas, we have a treasury bills, okay, treasury notes, uh, retail treasury bonds, dollar linked peso notes. So mayroon tayong 40 government uh, securities eligible dealers. Okay, 35 of them are banks. Four of them are non-banks with quasi-banking license and yung isa sa kanila ay non-bank with, without a quasi-banking license. Another type of security is the money market securities. These are investments that provide investors with higher levels of yield or yung interest than a checking or savings account while uh, still offering the same level of principal protection as outright cash. The money market is a subsection of the fixed income market and we generally think of the term fixed income as synonymous with bond. Okay? In reality, a bond is just one type of fixed income security katulad ng binanggit natin kanina or yung pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. So, ang pinaka main difference between money market uh, sa bond is that the term money market specializes in very short period or very short term debt securities or yung mga uh, securities na nagmamature in less than one year. Minsan, uh, money market is also called cash investment dahil sa karakteristik nito na short maturities. Thus, if the investor wants to invest the uh, funds that are needed in a shorter, shorter time period, uh, usually one year or less, then money market securities are often considered a good place to invest. Another type of investment alternative is the non-negotiable securities. This is definitely in the contrary of the characteristics of the negotiable securities. So let us know this time kung ano-ano nga ba ang uh, itong uh, non-negotiable securities na isa sa mga common investment alternatives na ginagamit ng iba't ibang investors. When we say non-negotiable securities, from the word itself, non-negotiable, it means the securities cannot be transferred from one party to the next. Sabi nga natin, it is in contrary to the first, secu uh, to the first securities na diniscuss natin, which is yung negotiable securities. By the way, non-negotiable securities are also called non-marketable instrument. An example of non-negotiable instrument would be a government savings bond. They can only be redeemed by the owner uh, and are not allowable to or not allowed to be sold to other parties. Moving forward, life insurance is also one of the investment alternatives na tinitignan ng ibang investors. And this time, isa ang life insurance sa mga nag-iingay when it comes to investment. Where maybe someone 
or some of you have encountered na may isang insurance agent na tinanong ka if you already have an insurance policy and beforehand, ang life insurance company kasi ay solely provider ng safety or protection coverage. Pero ngayon, they tend to innovate their mechanisms by allowing public to have an insurance policy and investment at the same time. So let us discover more about life insurance. Life insurance is a contract for payment of a sum of money to the person assured or to, or to the person entitled to receive the same on the happening of event insured against. Usually, the contract provides for the payment of an amount on the date of maturity or at a specified date at periodic intervals or if unfortunate, uh, death occurs. Among other things, the contracts uh, also provide for the payment of premium periodically to the corporation by the policyholders. So, life insurance eliminates risk. So, the definition given is actually refers uh, to the traditional life insurance. However, nowadays, insurance companies tend to be more flexible in terms of providing additional features that are associated to their tra traditional life insurance. One of the investment alternatives in these modern times as far as the life insurance is concerned is the variable universal life insurance or mas kilala sa tinatawag nating VUL. Let us discover all about this investment vehicle. When we say variable universal life insurance or also known as a variable unit link insurance or VUL is a permanent life insurance and investment rolled into one product. It provides living, debt, and disability benefits plus an investment component. In the Philippines, the usual practice is that 5% of the VUL insurance premiums goes to the cost of insurance while 95% goes to investments. With the stated definition of VUL, we can see that apart from the life insurance na nakukuha ng policyholder or ng isang investor, there, are, there is also associated investment. It means the one who will invest in this option will be insured uh, through the policy and will expect the return from his investment at the same time. Like what we have said, a portion ng payment uh, made by the investor will manage by the insurance company. Inilalagay din nila ang portion na yon sa shares sa company na maaari mong pampili or minsan sa mutual funds. So with this scheme, si company yung nagmamanage ng investment mo but of course, they allow you to choose which company yung paglalagyan ng investment mo. Take note guys that if you do not have enough knowledge yet about managing your own portfolio, allow the third party to do it so for you. So may mga experts na pwedeng makatulong sa iyo sa pag-manage ng isang investment. So this is the concept of valuable or variable universal life insurance or yung tinatawag nating VUL. Let us now proceed to the discussion of mutual funds. So, this investment alternative is one of the most common at madalas nating naririnig every time na napag-uusapan natin yung salitang investment. Actually, uh, there are many reasons to buy a mutual fund including diversification, systematic investing, and access accessibility. But of course, it still depends on the preferences and analysis ng isang investor kung saan investment vehicle niya ba ilalagay yung kanyang mga resources. More companies uh, offer mutual funds. One reason might be uh, because in the nature of our preferences. Kasi sabi nga natin, ang mutual fund ang isa sa mga alternatives na accessible. So, maraming nakaka-afford nito. So, alamin natin ngayon what really this investment alternative all about. Mutual fund is a type of financial vehicle made up of a pool of money collected from many investors to invest in securities like stocks, bonds, money market instruments, and other assets. Mutual funds are operated by professional money managers who allocate the fund's assets and attempt to produce capital gains or income for the fund's investors. A mutual fund's portfolio is structured and maintained to match the investment objectives stated in its prospectus. Mutual funds give small or individual investors access to professionally managed portfolios or equities. 
uh, bonds, and other securities. Remember that since this type of investment vehicle is made up of a pool of money na nakolect sa mga investors at inilalagay sa iba't ibang securities, each shareholders or each shareholder therefore have the right to uh, proportion of return or even in losses of the fund. So when you buy a unit or share of mutual fund, you are buying the performance and its uh, portfolio or more precisely a part of the portfolio's value. Uh, please take note then na ang mutual fund ay completely different with investing in shares or shares of stocks. Ang mutual funds ay hindi katulad ng stockholders na nabibigyan ng voting rights. So it means kapag mutual funds ang investment alternative na napili ng isang investor, Iwe-wave nila yung kanilang expectation na may makukuha silang karapatan sa pagboto. Okay? So, wala pong voting rights na nakukuha ang mga uh, shareholders na nag-invest sa mutual fund. So, if we will think, paano nga ba kumikita ang mga investors when they invested their money in mutual funds? So, investors typically earned a return from a mutual fund in three ways. Una, Income is earned from dividends on stocks and interest on bonds held in the funds portfolio. Normally, kapag ang isang company ay nag-gain ng profit at nag-declare ng dividends, the outstanding shareholders are entitled for the distribution of the dividends. Well, of course, the declared dividends will be divided among outstanding shares. Then, the shareholders have the right to decide kung kukuhanin ba nila or i-encash ba nila yung kanilang dividends or i-reinvest nila ulit yung kanilang makukuha dividends dun sa company. Then, if the investor decided to reinvest the dividend, it will automatically add up to his or her holding shares sa company. Okay, so the second one is the investor will also earn a return from mutual fund if the fund sells securities that have increased in price. The mutual fund has a capital gain. Most funds also pass on these gains to investors in a distribution. So, may mga investors na binibitawan na nila yung kanilang mga shares if the price of the shares ay mataas. Sa ganitong paraan kasi sila nagigain ng earning. Okay, another way uh, the investor gain return from mutual fund is if the fund holding increase in price but are not sold by the, fi the fund manager. So, itong tatlo na to, ito yung mga common ways the investor typically earn a return from mutual fund. Next investment alternatives is focus on the real assets. Real assets are physical assets that have an intrinsic worth due to their substance and properties. So, real assets include precious metals, uh, commodities, real estates, land, equipment, and natural, natural resources. They are appropriate for inclusion in most diversified portfolios because of their relatively low correlation with financial assets such as stocks and bonds. By the way, assets may be categorized into various classes as real, financial, and etc. So, lahat ng mga assets na to ay may intrinsic value at may potential of earning return through trading. Remember as well na ang real assets ay iba sa tinatawag nating financial assets but of course, they have relationship with one another. So, to better understand more about real assets, let us use this example. Let, let's say, si company ABC, uh, nagmamiari siya ng real estate properties. Uh, meron din siyang vehicles and office buildings. Yung mga nabanggit ko na properties ng company ABC are actually real assets. However, company ABC hat, has its brand name that is not a real asset even if it has a market value. So, from an investor's point of view, real assets are assets that provide hedging against inflation, so currency value fluctuation, and other macroeconomic factors. Okay, so the last alternative investment that I would like to share uh, to you is the real estate. Real estate is the land along with any permanent improvements attached to the land, whether natural or man-made. So, including water, trees, minerals, buildings, homes, fences, and bridges, real estate is a form of real property. It differs from personal property, which are uh, things not 
permanently attached to the land such as vehicle, boats, jewelry, okay, furniture, and farm equipment. So to better uh, to better or to avoid confusion, let us discuss the main difference of land, real estate, and real property. Okay, so pag sinabi nating land, it refers to the Earth's surface down to the center of the Earth and upward to the Earth's space above. Yan, so technical terminology, technical definition yan, and including of course the trees, minerals, and water. So kapag sinabi nating real estate, it is the land plus any permanent man-made additions such as houses and other buildings. Okay, pag sinabi naman nating real property, it is one of the two main classifications of property is it is uh, the interest, uh, benefits, and rights inherent in the ownership of the real estate. So broadly speaking, real estate includes physical surface of the land, what lies above and below it, what is permanently attached to it, plus all the rights of ownership, including the rights uh, to, pro to, po to possess okay, uh, or sell, lease, and enjoy the land. So, lahat ng na mga nabanggit ko ay kabilang sa tinatawag nating real estate. Kapag sinabi naman nating real property, it shouldn't be confused with personal property. Okay, so, uh, pag sinabi na kasi nating real property, it encompasses all property that doesn't fit the definition of real property. So, the primary characteristic of personal property is that kapag ito ay movable. So, example, ay katulad na binanggit ko kanina, so vehicle, boats, furniture, clothing, and smartphones. Hindi kasi sila permanently na naka-attach doon sa tinatawag nating land. Okay? So, take note that these properties, regardless if it is land, real estate, or real property, is one of the best investment alternatives And we will say that these properties are in form of investment if the investors sell these properties and recognize gains from the transaction. So to end this presentation, I would like to remind you that investment is always associated with the aim of gaining returns. Okay, putting money in a dead investment is never considered as good investment. Okay, so that's all for this video presentation. I hope you learned something. And yes, speaking of learning, please comment down your major takeaway about this topic. So thank you and God bless everyone.